Welcome back to FinTech Fridays. FinTech Fridays is a bi-weekly video podcast. And I say video for a reason. Today joining me is Mike Ferrasi. Mike is the founder of Red Button Media. You might know him from Hit the Hit the Red Button. He's all over LinkedIn. I'm a client. This is like the uh, the hair club for men. I'm a I'm a client and so uh, super excited <laughs> to to have you on, Mike. Thank you for having me, Brian. I appreciate it. So uh, the reason I reached out and, and asked you to, to rejoin me, because I think this is like your second or third time coming on the podcast. Second time, I think, but the, a lot has changed since the first. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and really, if we want to just like hone in on a single platform for a minute, like let's talk LinkedIn. Yeah. What's happened in the last 30 days on LinkedIn? That's kind of crazy. So... Last 30 days on LinkedIn, huge push to video. We're, we're not just seeing the introduction of the new video feed where you can touch on a video and it kicks you into like a separate full screen video feed. Looks a lot like Instagram Reels, right? Yep. But we've seen the introduction in beta, mind you. I don't know how many people have it. I have it. I've, I've been blessed by, by the powers that be, apparently, to give me access to this. But there is... What looks very much like a Facebook Reels style video tray. So you'll pull up your mobile feed, scroll down a little bit, and then there will be a series of vertical videos that you can scroll horizontally through yeah. in the tray. There's like four or five, like yeah. you might like these. It's called Videos for You. And then the post button that used to be at the middle and the bottom, that's the thing they want you to do the most. Now the thing that they want you to do the most is actually connect with people huh. because the thing that's in the bottom is no longer the post button. The post button has been moved to the top. Yeah. And the thing that's in the middle is your network button. So you can grow and you can outreach, but the thing that's right to the left of it, that has room now since the post button is moved is a video button. Right. So now in the main navigation at the bottom, you can get into the video feed. So now there's three ways to get you into a video feed that did not exist before a couple of months ago. Pretty wild. And so the beta has been out there for maybe 90 days, something like that, maybe, maybe 120 right. days. And I, 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 like you was part of that and, you know, invited in probably cause we do a lot of posted, a lot of video sure. on our platform. Uh, by the way, I, congratulations are in order. I'm going to come back to the congratulations in a moment. I've got to get the Thank confetti you. prepared. I like it. Um, but it, when that beta first came out, I was, it just didn't, it didn't do anything for me. And and the reason was because nobody that I cared about was showing up in that beta feed. So for me, that's still the case. Yeah. Like it's when rare. I go to the video feed, I'd say conservatively 80% of the videos that come through my video feed on LinkedIn are from people that I do not know, am not connected with, Same. not even second tier connections, just people that I've never seen before which i don't know kind of makes sense to me yeah I, I wish they'd prioritize the people that were connected with a little bit more but i do understand there being a lack of that type of content to pull from on the yeah. platform especially with the scrolling speed that people are accustomed to in a feed like that right yeah and then additionally it presents a huge opportunity for anybody creating video That's because what I was say. like you're, you're probably going to get seen by people who don't know you exist. And isn't that kind of the point? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So about a week ago, I got a text from a buddy. We were actually talking about him before we went live. Darren McKee, right? Darren mm -hmm. is uh, not in our business indirectly. He is now because he's coaching a bunch of people inside mortgage yeah. and real estate. But, um, uh, he texted me. Uh, and us, us tenured mortgage pros have a way of sucking people in, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he texted me like a week and a half ago, and he's like, yo, man, you showed up in my videos for you feed. I'm like, what? First time, actually, the only time I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. And so what does a guy like me do? Immediately goes to that video saying, thinking wrongly, by the way, incorrectly, sure. whatever the word is. Yeah. I thought I was going to go there and that thing was going to have 50,000 impressions and be blown up. And it was just a normal 
video for me. But um, anyway, he saw me there. That was cool. He's on video a lot. You're on video a lot. Neither I of am. you show up in my videos for you feed. So I, I agree with you. It's It speaks to the opportunity, how wide open it is. Yeah, uh, but I show up all the time for you in your traditional feed. Totally. 100%. The standard feed. So the yep. video feeds are like LinkedIn is obviously with high intent trying to gain people who are doing more video exposure yeah. to audiences that they have not reached yet. And so I'll ask you the question, knowing the answer, yeah. it's not just doing more video, but it's no. showing up yeah. consistently on That's video right. is probably who they're rewarding and showing to people that otherwise would not see them. That's right. Yeah. One of my favorite sayings is that uh, doing video is not a strategy. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it's not. Also, yeah. um, for anybody who's watching this, all this LinkedIn talk, if you're still here, then you're tuned into LinkedIn, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, for all those who are not tuned into LinkedIn, you're probably already gone and we apologize. But for those yeah. of you who are here, you know. They went back to MySpace. They're, they're yeah, good. That's right. You know. <laughs> that videos are not reels. Like we're not creating something that is a social media post for a platform. Not us. There are people that do that, but not us. We're business people. We don't monetize our video with on platform ad revenue and brand deals. We monetize our video through our business. And the yeah, point of the video <laughs> is to yeah build those relationships, connect and converse with people that we haven't met before. That's why we're making video. So if there's not the intent behind your video, especially in the pre-planning phases of who exactly you're going to be talking to and how you're going to be providing value to them, then you're just kind of tossing wet noodles at the wall and seeing what sticks, right? Having yeah. a strategy that we, can, that we can test and observe against is always going to be a... I don't want to say a better method because it could be painful for some people, but it is yep. going to be a faster method to growth. So congratulations are in order, Mr. Farasi. Yesterday you had a, uh, a milestone here yeah. on, uh, on video and specifically video on LinkedIn. Tell us a yeah. little bit about uh, what yesterday was all about. Yeah. So yesterday uh, we're recording this a, a little bit earlier, but this is they don't have to FinTech know. Friday as you release this. Sorry, cat's out of the bag, man. We got to be authentic <laughs> here, right? Um, as of the day that this is released, yesterday, I will have posted a video on LinkedIn for the 500th day in a row. It's crazy. Um, that is consecutive days. At least, I should say, at least one video. Because, you right. know, every once in a while, I just pull up the camera on the phone and talk to it because I have an extra idea in the evening or something. Yeah. But, um, yeah, 500 days in a row posting a video on LinkedIn. It's been one heck of a thing. It's been a learning experience. It's been an exercise in communicating and connecting with people. Uh, it's been amazing for business. Yeah. Um, you know, business life. Like, that. the before and after is wild. Uh, when, when you look at things like that and I'm not talking about like, Oh, now I have a multi-million dollar agency. I started with nothing like right. come on, 500 days. It's been just over a year and a half. Like these things take time, but you have a right? good business. I have a business that I'm able to support my family with. And, and I founded red button media in February of 2023. Um, like a lot of people know, but probably not everybody, uh, Brian and Finn Locker was my first official red button media client. <laughs> right. Um, when I started. The mission as a semi-displaced mortgage professional who had recently lost half his income and didn't have enough money to pay the bills anymore. Young family. You know, I got, they're now 11 and 2. You know, wife's still, still in there taking care of them. Thank, thank goodness we were able to make that happen because cost of child care is so out of whack these right. days. It didn't make sense for her to go back to work part-time or whatever it was to bring in extra money. We would have just spent it right, right when we got it. So. At that time, the mission was to build something that allows me to support my beautiful family in a way that no one company can ever pull the rug out underneath. Right. Again. You know, like that, like that was it. Um, quit putting all those eggs in one basket because the world is different now. Like we are not typically 
It's the exception to the rule that is. But typically, we are not in a world anymore where somebody goes and works for the same company for 30, 40, 50 years and then yeah. retires and sails off into the sunset. That's not how it works. You know, in any given month, there could be a catastrophe or economic downturn or something that results in so many people being on the chopping block, you can't even count. And the effects are widespread. And I had been lucky enough to dodge that bullet many times in my 20 plus year mortgage career. This past time, I didn't dodge that bullet. Um, I dodged it a little bit. Uh, I dodged it halfway, yeah. right? <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't completely kicked to the curb, but I was downsized, so to speak. And I needed to find a way to, to get those bills paid, put food on table and diapers on butts. Like that's the name of the game. Like no pride here. Yeah. And after considering Uber Eats deliveries and dog walking in the neighborhood, I landed on starting a, a little video content agency because yeah. that's what I was good at and that's what I love. And and that's what we can actually be effective at uh, in in this time uh, when when we're doing this. And the timing was good because kind of the rise of video, that's what people are paying attention to. I've always kind of had a marketing mind, so it, it really led into that. And I started practicing what I preach and just making video and posting it, providing value to a specific target audience, you know, and I had a really good handle on how to do that from the very beginning. Right. And even with that foundation, 500 days later, you learned so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So this is, this is like real life, right? Real yeah. practical experience here. So at what, at what point in that 500 days mm -hmm. did you, did you say this is going to work? Or by the way, I, I still don't know what's going to work. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Every, like everything's an experiment. It's, it's, it's interesting, right? Like I stumble and I stutter because I don't have these words prepared. Like this is like, this is, this is real. It's, this is coming from here. Right. So, for my entire life, I've worked jobs with a somewhat predictable paycheck. Yeah. Um, early in my 20s, I sold cars. I was a loan officer. I was an account executive. That's commission-based, but I didn't have a whole lot of responsibilities to take care of, so you can take those risks. Right. You know, I transitioned into secondary marketing, product management, moved up in capital markets, 15 plus years in the mortgage industry in capital markets. And then I moved out from capital markets into building something that's more entrepreneurial looking at the yep. mortgage bank that I was looking at. Then I transitioned over to a marketing role that was all content marketing all the time with a higher salary. And all of this stuff is salary, 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 salary. So going from that point to a spot where, okay, I'm going to build this thing for myself. I'm not going to keep building things for other people. I'm just going to build it for me. Even though I wasn't out talking to VCs, trying to fundraise and trying to get seed money and all of that stuff, I wasn't building with a nest egg. I wasn't right. building this thing because it's going to change the world and we're yeah. going to revolutionize this and I'm the visionary that can do it. It's like, no, man, I need a paycheck. You know, these kids need to eat. Yeah. You know, so like coming from that mentality, you kind of learn to do everything you possibly can with as little as possible because that's kind of what you have to work with as little as possible and that transition has been really interesting i think a month or two ago was the first time that i was able to sit back and exhale i told my wife many many times that every day takes more than a day away from me right um i've had health issues in the past uh, just before my 40th birthday in 2022, I had a stroke. Um, blood pressure is back under control now, full recovery. Everything's fine, you know, like all that's okay. But we like we had a bad run there for a little while with family stuff and health and this and that. And then right off the back of that came this windfall of whack, you can't pay your bills anymore. Yeah. So it's a, like it's just really stressful situation to be in. So not only is it a scramble to pay the bills, but it's also an experiment. Yeah. You know, so the experimental aspect of everything is both terrifying and incredibly fun. 
you know, I feel like in a, in a previous life, I would have been a scientist or a physicist or something. Cause I love the experimentation aspect of marketing and, and what I've been building, what I've been doing, but at any given time, I'm still in the mentality that this experiment could fail, you know? So you keep, keep trucking, you keep pressing forward, you keep doing what you believe are the core things that are going to continue to drive that graph, the, the proper direction, you know, and you do your best to talk to friends and, and family and, and be honest about things on the days where the roller coaster is moving the wrong direction. Cause the day to day roller coaster looks a whole lot different oh, yeah. than the doomed out graph of the last year, year and a half. Right. And those are the days that are tougher to get through. And I think two months ago was probably the first time that I was able to sit back and take a breath and, and look at my wife and say, you know, let's go out to dinner tonight because we just don't feel like cooking. Right. Like that was, that was a luxury that we didn't realize how much we were undervaluing before. Sure. You know, and now that's something that I'll never take for granted. And hopefully my kids will be able to both appreciate, but also hopefully they'll be able to undervalue it because we'll be able to provide it to them. Like it's yeah, kind of yeah. a, it's a double edged sword there, right? Yeah, there's you want, every, I mean, there's, you want everything for them, but you want them to know what they have at the same time. It's hard. Yeah, there's so it's much a hard tightrope to walk, but you got to do so it. much there. But I, yeah, I, I I've, think, I've rambled so much. What, no, what you it, got man. for me? Let's let's get some value out to the people that are sticking yeah, with us here. I don't don't discount the value that was there because the too often people only see the end results. People on the other yeah. side, right? And yeah. And, you know, that, that's when you hear, oh, he got lucky and he fell into this. No, 500 straight days of... Out of the 500 videos that I've posted, the ones that I'm most proud of are the ones that the, where the last thing I want to do, do is flip on the camera. They were the days when I lost a client and had yeah. another conversation that didn't go how I was planning. Yeah. And things weren't looking up. And I flipped on the camera every anyway. And even if the only thing I had to talk about was... Hey, today hasn't been a good day. I don't want to be on camera right now. Right. And maybe hopefully putting this video out will give somebody else permission to have a bad day because sometimes yeah. that's all right. You know, like it's okay to just have a bad day, shut it down early and come back and 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 take your hacks tomorrow. Like that's, that's okay. Right. And if me being able to be vulnerable enough to do that can show one other person out there that it's okay to have a bad day. Maybe I'll just go have a drink and hit the bed, hit, hit, hit the sack early, right. you know, like then, then good. Like that's somebody that we helped and that, and then it's worth, it's all worth doing at that point. So let, let's, uh, I'm going to close on, on a, on, on a, on a quick kind of note here. So yeah. if folks are interested, they need to a follow you on LinkedIn. Cause guess what? Tomorrow, actually today, today will be five. Ironically, today is the first day that I'm not posting a video on LinkedIn, but sure enough, I'm showing up anyway. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. So does, does it really count? Uh, yeah. And then secondly, for folks that follow me on LinkedIn, you'll notice a lot of video uh, of me talking. Oftentimes over the course of maybe 30 or so days, it'll be a video of me talking, maybe looking the same, wearing the same shirt. Mike and I have a monthly session where you guide me through a series of uh, topics. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, as part of your guided content creation uh, package. And we pump out 12 to 14 videos in about 45 minutes now. We got it down to yeah. a pretty good clip. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're getting a nice flow. I love yeah, those it's, sessions. It's been fun. It, it actually. It's so much fun. Yeah. You know, it's super... and, and, that's part, and that's part of the messaging, right? Like the last, we talked about the last time I was on this show, I thought the target market for that product would be loan officers, branch yeah. managers looking to get on video more. That is not the target market for that product. Loan officers and branch managers typically are looking for something a little bit more entry level from a budget perspective. Yeah. And they should. Yeah. That's exactly what they should be looking for. Don't sink a whole lot of time, effort, and money into this. My ICP has definitively changed since I launched this thing. And I learned that what I thought my core value props were and this is part of the 500 video thing. My core value props are not necessarily helping people get comfortable on camera. That's one of them, sure. But a bigger value is holding people accountable for yeah. doing it so they stay consistent. That's right. You know, I thought it was 
helping people ideate topics to help them understand what they need to be talking about. Is that a value prop? Sure, but it's not nearly as valuable as helping them get their month worth of video content in one hour of their time because right. people are busy, man. Like it's, it's time savings, it's accountability, it's all those things kind of rolled into one. And if you're a founder or an executive or a leader who wants to build a revenue producing audience for your brand, hit me up, let me know. That's what we're here for. Boom. That's yep. it, man. Right there. When, I guess when we do this again, we're, we're not going to wait 500 days. I can promise you that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. But, but we're, I'm sure there'll be another pretty interesting milestone that you'll uh, have eclipsed by then. I'm proud to be, proud to be client number one. For one, um, proud to have you, man. Super this proud to have you as a friend. Amazing in, the entire the entire time. And and I, I want to reiterate something for the people that are watching this that didn't see my 500th video yesterday. It was a conversation that I had with Brian and Kyle Draper, Green Green Book Club, right? Where Brian looked at me and Kyle, and I don't know if this was just prior to or just after that little virtual event we did together. You looked at us and said, "Man, I don't know if you guys have ever said no to me." <laughs> and I mentioned that in my video that went up yesterday on LinkedIn. And the reason is because you can't imagine every single one of you, you cannot imagine the value in being the person that doesn't say no to collaboration with good people. Right. If a good person asks you to collaborate, just find a way to make it happen. If you put enough good out into the world, it will come back to you in positive ways. Right there. That's so thank our, you. Thank you for the opportunities, my friend. Oh, that's the hook right there. Mike, thanks again for uh, for coming on our little podcast. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Check out Mike. Check out Red Button Media. Follow him immediately on LinkedIn. See you in two weeks, people.